understand the bells, you know. Hard the bell. chat shows but yeah I can see that <laughs> is that because people are afraid of you you are unpredictable sometimes yeah <laughs> Some... <laughs> well yeah yeah I am yeah but has this always been a, a difficulty in your career did you did you find that when you started out that because of this reputation that you built quickly <laughs> 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 No. What's that? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just wondered if... No, yeah, yeah, ever since my career's, you know, been on, <laughs> I've, had <di> I've had difficulties <laughs> with it, yeah. Because um, I don't know, it, it, it all started. Do you want to really know? Yeah. All right, then. <laughs> <laughs> it's got this in it. <laughs> it all starts, you see. Um, Peter, before I, you know... Uh, <laughs> Peter, before I made the, um, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the little time in there, uh, I was on this, um, no, I was, I was in this, my manager's office, and he spoke like that, um, it's, <laughs> he, he spoke like that, you see, he, he wasn't, um, you know, he just, he, he just spoke like that. And the, the phone rang, which they do, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> and it went, brr, brr, so it, similar to that. Hmm. Brr, brr. And my manager picked it up, you see. Because oh you would do, wouldn't you? If it, if it rang, oh you'd pick it up, wouldn't you? And he picked it up, he went, hello. And the voice said, And it was somebody, I, I can't mention the name, but, but it was a big agent from London who wanted to book an act because, God love him, Dick Emery went sick, you see, and th they needed somebody to take his place. You see, so I went down with a little suit and <laughs> hold my arm, because oh, yeah. you carry him like that, don't you? Because <laughs> <laughs> he went like that before on the floor, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> it was like <laughs> And I had this, I had this music, piano-based drum part, Candle bass drums. And we'd go around the northern clubs. There was all beer stains and snot on them and everything. You know, really. <laughs> <laughs> I went to London with a, a gravy stained suit with, and bogey music. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I walked into the Victoria Palace and there's this fellow on the door and he said, I, I turned up, it was, it was raining very hard. It was persistently pouring. <laughs> 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 And he said, uh, Who are you? I said, Freddy Starr. He said, Freddy Starr, he's not here, is he? Yeah. <laughs> I said, Not Freddy Starr, I said, Freddy Starr, he said. Wait here at the stage door, don't move. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> we have a geezer here by the name of Freddy Starr. Right, we'll send him up. Hey, get upstairs. So I went upstairs, because it was my first time in a theatre, you see. And then, up comes the MD, the musical director, and he's got this beautiful grey hair, all sweet back and it's the sort of star, it's a booth on it. <laughs> no, he's all nice grey hair and he had this beautiful tuxedo on, ooh, really looked at, and painted leather shoes. He says, uh, hello, I'm your MD for this evening. Uh, could I see your music? 
<laughs> so, so said they, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I got the music out like that. And he went, ooh. And he, he picked it up literally like that. And he put it down on this table, you see. And he said, it goes, beep a da beep beep beep. And I said, no, it goes, beep a da beep beep beep. Anyway, he said, uh, I said, yes, the tempo of this music is, as you know, in your ears, the temp you must give the tempos out, you see, of your tunes that you're going to sing. You know, I've got rhythm, I've got, that's a tempo. See? I said, this one goes, da be da be da da da. He said, don't tell me my job, please. I know the tempos, I'm a fully as a musician, please don't. And I went, sure, whatever you say. So I got dressed and he took me, took me music down and I walked on stage and the stage manager went, where are you going? I said, I'm, he said, what's your name? He said, Freddie Stone. He said, stand there, don't move. I said, I'm, I'm there. He said, put the cigarettes out. He said, and I went, oh, sorry. Because <laughs> you're not allowed to smoke on stage, you see. So I put it out. And the telegirls went, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and so Freddie Davis went out and he said, ladies and gentlemen, and now a newcomer to the business, because I've been used to working all the heavy clubs in Liverpool, all like that, you see. <laughs> and they're just the women. <laughs> so, going to a theatre in London was tame. See? So, I walked, he said, first, uh, first man to uh, work in the theatre, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Freddie Starr. And I walked on. I said, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And they're all there. <laughs> so, I thought, well, <laughs> when you're up there by yourself, it's a lonely life, isn't it? Well, you wouldn't know. Mm. But. <laughs> <laughs> when you're up there, you've got to fight for your life up there, you see. So I said, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cliff Richard, which should have been ba ba da ba dee da da. And I went, ba dee da dee da da da. And I went, eh, hey, you. And he went, yes. See? And I jumped in the pit <laughs> and I got his baton and broke it. I said, right, now play it in stereo. <laughs> <laughs> but when it came on, I got a standard evasion on there, you see. And they all go, hey, all the people, and I felt very good. And all the people that had give me a rollicking, when I came off, they went, my boy, you're wonderful. <laughs> you know, all that. And that's where I got the bad name from, through people put their arm around me. <laughs> Someone's left the door open to me. <laughs> you started as a, as a rock musician. Why, you've got a good voice. Why did you pack that in? Well, you see, I could have been the biggest rock star in the world. <laughs> <laughs> but if it wasn't, I could have been the biggest pop star in the world if it wasn't for Elvis Presley and the Beatles. <laughs> Being serious, uh, I used to be in a rock and roll band and uh, I used to enjoy myself, but I gradually got into comedy because I've always been a bit of an ass, you know. Um, so how did you get into comedy? Um, I've always been... Uh, I've always done comedy, you see. Um, not gags, because I don't think that's funny doing jokes. I, I don't think to tell jokes is being a funny... You don't like stand-up comedians? I don't dislike them, um, but I like somebody that is that makes me laugh just 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 looking at them. <laughs> we should do a pantomime today. <laughs> but you had this. You came out with this spontaneous, kind of well destructive kind of humour, which I think was ahead of its time. Was that one of the reasons you think some people in the establishment didn't accept it, that it, it seemed to break with convention, with comic convention? That's right. Um, see, see, many years ago, I, I got slated by the press, um, and I've done a good job on that. And, but recently, they've been very kind to me, touch wood, you know. And, but a, a long time ago, I should say 10 years ago, or maybe even more, my catchphrase, I, I, I used to walk on stage, you see, and I'd walk on and go, and two bald eggs, please. Um, 
the critics and the audience would go, my God, he's lavatorial jokes, he's disgusting. And now I watch great comics like Jim Davis, and he walks on television and goes, Arr. and it's accepted now, mm. see? Uh, so I, I feel that I'm the test pilot for some comedy. You know, really. <laughs> so you're ahead of your time, but you're often accused of being blue, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that true? Or is it that justified in your opinion? No. No, being honest, no. I've never gone on and, and told, uh, said a four-letter word on stage, ever. And I w if somebody came up to me and gave me a million pounds in a suitcase and says, go on there, uh, or go on a live show on television and tell a blue joke, I would take the money. <laughs> your material to to the audience I mean how far do you think is blue I don't know you know um, like if it was telling a joke I mean um, like this fellow goes to the doctor and, he, and he's in Liverpool a fellow called Yoza in Liverpool and he goes to the doctor and he said yeah. he walks in and then he goes yeah. doctor yeah. she's got a problem the doctor says, yes, what is it? She says, me, really? No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? He says, me, really? Yeah, me, really, really? <laughs> so the doctor says, um, well, drop your pants. And so he goes, and he stands like that. And the doctor goes, by Jove, he said. <laughs> it's shaped like a little rocket ship, isn't it? <laughs> He says, what does your wife think about it? He says, she's over the moon. <laughs> I mean, nobody, nobody would think that was blue, would they? No, but, a bit, but critics, critics do, you know. Um, some critics would. I'm not saying all critics would, but I mean, some critics would modern do. Modern comedians get away. I mean, the modern school. I don't. Get away with more <laughs> than that, don't they? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, but the, the cult, cult figures, then. So you get, like, uh, Billy Connolly, who's great. And I love him. He's terrific. And, uh, but he's, he's got a certain audience which will go and watch him. And some people won't watch him. And some people will watch me and some people won't. Mm. It's the same as everything. I mean, Is this because of a reputation that you've deserved or because... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got a lovely smile, you know. Right? <laughs> or because it's been created for you by the press. No, I, I think uh, the choice was mine to choose. And I chose to go that way, uh, to be a bit of a rebel. Um, and you go the opposite way as um, against the establishment. Because you, know, you think they're wrong, you know, they're destroying your talent. And really, they're not really. It's just that you've got to be disciplined. Like, say you're doing a television series or a, a, a chat show. You've it got sounds to be as if you regret that you, you might have been regarded as a rebel. Uh, originally, do you think that's it's curtailed your career? Yes, of course it has. Yes, yes, it did a great damage to my career. Of course it did. I, I couldn't get arrested for three years. I mean, <laughs> there was no television company wanted to see me, or uh, I, I couldn't even get on your show. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I knew you'd come crawling back at the end. <laughs> As Robert says, I'll come crawling <laughs> back. So, <laughs> so yes, it's. Uh, but now you see the the the. the there's people that, that if you do um, change your ways, and th there was a lot to do with um, the drugs, you say, that was making you act a little bit uh, stranger than you would normally act. Mm. But I don't regret going down that bad road, because I've been down there, and I'm on my way back again. I know that I'm a falling star. I know that. There's no way to tell me, because I, I can take the truth. And I know that. I, I used to be up there, but I'm down here at the moment. But I'll make my way back up because I'm determined. Well I, well, I wouldn't agree with the fact that... I think you're just going for the applause there. You're not down there at all, are you? No, I don't think you're down there. Anyway, I think you've got a long-standing dedication. You gave us a little burst of Elvis before. He seems to be very important in your life. You've, you've kept the, the impersonations going. It's, he is important to me, yeah. I think he's important to everybody. I mean, how old was you when you first heard Presley? Come on. <laughs> when, when he came out in 1956. Fifteen. Fifteen. I was still in, in a pram. 
<laughs> and I was sitting in the front with that. Oh, bubble, bubble, bubble. <laughs> and I heard this. Will Sam Spire, baby, let me. And, uh, <laughs> if I, if I find a new place to dwell. <laughs> and when I saw the man, I, I, when I heard him, I thought, this is it. it this is terrific, this voice. I've never heard anything like this. Because it was all... This was very perceptive for you, being in the pram. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you immediately get out and boogie? <laughs> boogie. <laughs> <laughs> I do like... <laughs> Elvis was the great innovator of all music. He was the guy who dared to rock the definitive, and he did. So, uh, me, I, I, I... Yeah, three chairs for Presley, yeah. You identify with him. Yep, and also I identify with the Beatles as well, because uh, every was, everybody was influenced by Elvis, and then when the Beatles came along, they were all copying Elvis, and then when the Beatles came along, they, they found a style oh. of their own, and everybody copied them. So, yeah. so. Well, before you do this in Elvis, do you ever wish that you, no. you had... What? I'm not going to do it. You should have Elvis, I thought you... Some of you know me now sell too much. I want to tell you the story about a plant that goes on the woods in the fields. It looks something like a turn of green. Everybody calls it poke Sally. Now that's poke Sally. working live well uh, do you find it so no I, I think they're both different entities hmm. um, as working live to work in television work in television is there's a budget number one which I didn't realize before because that's what's been wrong with me I didn't know how to play the game of television until somebody comes to me and says now listen the game of the television it's like you playing poker with me and not you not knowing the rules you're gonna lose your money hmm. right so when somebody teaches the rules of how to behave I meant to say yes, I meant to say no, and that, that is the rule. But the, you think the bad days are over, that your reputation as, as a somewhat difficult performer is due for a, an improvement? In the business, within show business, I've got a very bad reputation. Don't let's fool ourselves. You know, I know that, and I think you're very brave, you, <laughs> to <laughs> interview me. And you see, but I would never do nothing that is outrageous to you. Because I don't believe this is your show and I've got great respect for you. 
saying that's, that's my professionalism that other people don't know about. But that's how I feel. And when I do television, or if I'm working live, I always picture what me and my manager talk about. An old lady in Bournemouth, right? Sitting down in, in her lounge and watching the television and she, you can't do nothing blue because you don't want to offend the old lady. And we always say, if you're getting too blue, the old lady in Bournemouth. See? <laughs> and I go, you're right. Yeah. See, so, this is for the old lady in Bournemouth. <laughs> you see, there's, there's, a, there's a bit of you. There's a bit of you that will never change. Oh, well, and I hope it doesn't. I hope well, it doesn't. that's right. I mean, you cannot take somebody's talent and, and destroy no. what they're made of. Otherwise, you may, you may as well just say, um, now, I want you to wind somebody up and say, right, now, walk on there three steps, and smile on the camera that, and do into that, and, and it, your talent's gone. You, well, you feel cooped up. I'm sure it won't. Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you for last night, Terry. Thank you.